Cause I find joy within the ordinary It's extraordinary Oh, the ordinary It's extraordinary So thank you for coming to this workshop. Spiritual awakening and anxiety recovery. About five minutes ago, just before I came upstairs, a phrase dropped into my mind, which was, I remember exactly what it was, but it was something like this. You get to heaven by walking through hell. The way to heaven is through hell. And that's certainly been my experience, and that's the experience of so many people who go through difficult, challenging, internal experiences. The way that society is, believes and thinks, is that mental health challenges like anxiety or depression or PTSD, all of this sort of stuff, it's just something that's gone terribly wrong that we need to fix. It's like a disease that you have to fix. And for somebody who is suffering with anxiety, with panic, with trauma, depression, it's incredibly, incredibly useful. <clears throat> to reframe that, to reframe the way that you understand your anxiety, the way to reframe the way that you understand your mental health challenges and to start to see them as not necessarily a, something terrible, terrible that's gone terribly wrong, but rather to see them as a period of growth, a period of inner evolution, inner growth. Now that's certainly been my experience. I know I've said this before and some of you have probably heard my story, but I experienced just, just the most incredibly intense mental health challenges intense panic, intense anxiety, trauma, fear. And for years I was struggling. I just wanted to get out. I just wanted to get rid of it. I wanted to fix it. Why the hell has this happened to me? Why has this happened to me? It's been 10 years now since that started. And what I've come to see through all of this time is that what was actually happening was my ego mind, the ego mind, the thought made self was freaking out with the anxiety, but actually that mind made self was almost dissolving gradually. And what started to take its place is this sense of my own being. This sense of being in touch with something inside which is completely at peace, 
regardless of experience. My body isn't always at peace, definitely not. Even my thoughts aren't always at peace, but there's something inside that is. And through all the years of anxiety, through all the years of struggle, in all the different ways that it manifested, I've seen that there is an incredible intelligence to it. And it is here to, to wake us up to our own being. To return us back to that place we were in when we were a baby. When you see a baby, you see there's no ego there. They're not thinking stories, getting so caught up in their stories in their head, thinking about the future. Oh no, what am I going to do next week? Oh, I need to. <laughs> I need to get the perfect job. I need to figure my life out. A baby just doesn't have that. They are just being. And because they are being, because they're in touch with their being, they're naturally joyful. They're naturally happy. They're naturally content with life. A baby, obviously, is completely in their innocence. What happens when we grow up? Because the world is a kind of crazy place, our innocence becomes corrupted. We go to school and we start learning that kids aren't always going to be nice to us. We have to protect ourselves. We have to protect our innocence. So we put up these shields, this armor. And through the years, especially if we've had difficult experiences, if we've had parents who might be traumatized or parents who haven't dealt with their own stuff, all the experiences through the teenage years, through life, just solidify this sense of self that needs to protect itself. And that we can call the ego. That sense of self that needs to protect itself starts to feel very separate from the world. A baby naturally feels very connected to the world. They feel very connected to their environment. They don't feel separate from their environment. baby is naturally at home but the adult self especially someone who's suffering from anxiety starts to feel very separate from the world now i, I always say this but if you're experiencing anxiety if you're suffering from anxiety in a certain sense, you are lucky. You are lucky. Because most people go through their whole lives, once they've come out of their innocence, gone through their, chi their childhood, through their teenage years, become this adult with this ego, people can get by on that with addictions, watching Netflix, watching TV, addicted to the news, addicted to their opinions, cigarettes, alcohol, all that stuff. You can get by with that. You can have an okay life, but something will always, it will always feel like something is missing. That's why people have midlife crisis, crises. That's why elderly people, so many elderly people are grumpy. Actually, quite a lot of elderly people do go through this transformation when they get closer to to death, but lots stay in that ego, ego sense of self. Now, if you have anxiety, I say you are lucky. 
because the the sense of contracted self the contracted sense of self the ego has become so acute that it's causing you suffering it's causing you suffering that you have to do something about because it's unbearable to live with amazing what that means is the ego is coming up to be burnt up coming up to be burnt up to be burnt up by your consciousness by your awareness because you are not the ego you are the one who is aware of it if you are aware of the ego how can you be the ego you must be the one who is aware of it if you are aware of your thoughts how can you be your thoughts you must be the one who is aware of them if you are aware of your emotional body the contractions the fearful reactions how can you be that you must be the one who is aware of it and we've come gradually onto the first way in which we can use our anxiety our fear for what i call spiritual awakening because it's uncomfortable it can provide a motivation motivation to go beyond it so i'll say again if you can see your anxiety however it's manifesting its thoughts and emotions feelings in the body if you can see that you cannot be that you must be the one who is aware of it you must be the one who knows it the one who knows it the one who is aware of it isn't afraid this awareness this awareness this, that's knowing your mind that's knowing your body that's knowing your emotions the awareness that is knowing the sight of the room the awareness that is knowing the laptop in front of you or the phone in front of you the awareness that is knowing my voice is free isn't suffering so a little technique for you or a little practice for you any time you notice the anxious one arising you simply ask yourself the question what knows or is aware of this anxious mind or what knows or is aware of this anxious one and when you ask yourself that question what knows or is aware of this anxious one that takes you to the experience of the one who knows or is aware of it it's not a big experience <laughs> it's very subtle this awareness is here you are aware you can't not be aware but how often are we told when we're growing up you're aware <laughs> we're taught about our thoughts we're taught about information we're taught about football we're taught to watch tv we're taught all about seeing things in the world but we're not when no one ever says can you notice this awareness that is observing it all can you notice this awareness that your thoughts are arising within can you notice this very simple awareness that the body is arising within it's so simple yet it has the ability to take you out of your suffering 
And the anxiety, the anxious thinking self, is the perfect motivation to go through this inquiry, the perfect motivating force to take you out of ego and into your being. And that's actually what anxiety is really here for. It's here to drive you deeper and deeper into your own being. It's here to help you discover peace. The way that life works from what I've seen is that our greatest challenges become our greatest gifts. Our greatest challenges become our greatest qualities. So somebody who is feeling a lot of fear, somebody who isn't feeling peace, someone who's feeling very unpeaceful, very stressed, very panicked, very anxious, has the opportunity to become an incredibly peaceful person. Now, another reason why having anxiety is a, is a really positive thing on the spiritual path is because it means that you start valuing peace. You start to value peace. Inner peace, you, you really value it. Someone who's had their, their peace taken away comes to really value peace. Most people, when they experience peace, they like it. Everyone likes to experience peace. But it's not, it's not a, it doesn't have the same value as somebody who has experienced a lot of trauma or anxiety or panic and stuff. But for someone who's experienced a lot of anxiety, peace is so valuable. And because it's valuable, you cherish it. And peace is a quality of your being. Peace is a quality of what you really are. And because of that, because you value peace, you value your own being. And you give your attention to it. You give your awareness to it. You, you love it. You fall in love with your own being. And every single person in the world is really looking for one thing. Every single person in the world is looking for their own being. They don't realize it, they don't realize it, but they are looking for their own being. And peace is the doorway. So we've covered one of the ways in which you can use your fear and anxiety to awaken to your being. to awaken to your true nature. And now we're gonna explore another way in which you can use what you've perhaps been struggling with to awaken, to awaken. In India, they have two, well, there's a lot of spirituality in India, but in, they have two main approaches. There's the Vedantic approach to spirituality, and there's the Tantric approach to spirituality. 
many, many teachers for a long time have taught the Vedantic approach. The Vedantic approach is getting away from your mind, getting away from your ego, coming to know yourself as the presence of awareness, coming to know yourself as this free presence of awareness and staying with that, ignoring the body, ignoring the mind and just coming to know this, the goodness of your being, staying with that. That's the Vedantic approach and there's nothing wrong with that. But what I've needed on my path and what many, many people need, and I feel if you're experiencing trauma, you, you need this. If you've experienced trauma, which many of us have, you need this. It's the tantric approach. The tantric approach is whereby we come fully into everything that we're experiencing. We fully embrace everything within us with our awareness. We bring this awareness into our body. We bring this awareness to meet the energy of fear within our body. What, what has happened to the anxiety sufferer is they have this contraction of energy inside the body. That's all it is, energy. Fear is energy. There is nothing wrong with it. It's not a negative energy. There's no such thing as negative energy. There's dense energy and there's energy that's been freed up. Now, if you've been suffering a lot of trauma and anxiety or whatever, then you've got this dense energy in your body. And there is a lot of power in that. There is a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of power in that. And what that can do is it can stop powering these thoughts, <laughs> this loop of fearful, worrying thinking. And as you know, that can just start driving you crazy because there's so much energy to it. It just keeps going and going. And it can also cause all sorts of unusual behaviors and, and bodily reactions and, and patterns. And, and, and there's such a, a wide array of ways in which this energy can manifest in negative, in, yeah, in negative ways, in ways that are causing you suffering and causing you to struggle. It might be OCD, it might be health anxiety, it might come up in social situations, you just got this energy and it's like, ah, and then you, your mind goes crazy and you, you think people are looking at you because you're strange and all of this stuff. But it's just this energy which is trying to find some way to, some way out, it doesn't, want to be contracted it doesn't want to be kept in this dense way so what we can do is instead of allowing it to rise up into thinking and cause us to become this suffering anxious ego self We can, as soon as we notice that it's arising, as soon as we notice we're about to be pulled in to that loop of fearful, worrying thinking, we just bring our awareness into it, wherever it is in the body, throat, heart, belly, spine, hips, knees, wherever you feel it, you just bring your attention into it. You meet it with your awareness. And then if you really feel it, if you fully feel it, it won't pull you into thinking, at least not as much. And when you meet it with your awareness, your awareness is this healing 
presence and your awareness, when it meets, when it really meets that energy, it allows the energy to open up and release from your nervous system. The energy, when really met, it goes from being this dense contraction within your body to it opens up and it starts to, it can start to release from you. Now, you, you, you don't want to do this with the intention of releasing it. You need to do this with the intention of meeting it. Because there is no suffering within the energy itself. Suffering only happens when it rises up into the mind and causes thinking. Suffering only happens through thinking. It doesn't happen through the energy itself. So if when a reaction is arising within you, say you're about to start worrying about something that's going to happen in the future, when you see that that's coming up in your mind, you bring all of your attention into the feeling and you just stay. And you meet it with your attention and you also, you're meeting it with your awareness. You're holding it with your presence. It'll try and pull you in again. It will try and pull you into thinking. And when it does, you just come back and you just stay present, alert in the body, holding your feelings with your attention, with your awareness. Bringing your attention down below the neck, feeling your body. And this is one of the number one tools for spiritual awakening spiritual transformation because as well as meeting the energy in the body and allowing that to do whatever it wants to do move through you open open up within you release from you you ought, you're also coming to a place where the mind isn't moving anymore that ego mind isn't moving anymore that ego mind it wants to survive it doesn't want to die But you, as awareness, you as presence, are stronger than that ego mind. And if you really stay in your body like this, you really stay with the feelings without being pulled into it, that alone opens you up to a deeper sense of self. It opens you up to your being. And if you do this time and time again, whenever these reactions come up, if you meet them in your body, you stay with the feelings in your body. The ego mind starts to lose its grip on you. And you begin to awaken. And the amazing thing is, when you start to go through this process of awakening, you start to feel connected to everything around you because you realize yourself as this awareness. You start to know yourself as the awareness within which everything is arising. And that awareness is touching everything. It's completely, it's completely intertwined with everything. So you feel at home. You don't feel lost and alone in the world. Now, this isn't some big experience. It's not like you're suddenly going to be like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm in touch with everything. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is so amazing. That, that might happen. <laughs> but that's not happened for me, and it doesn't happen for most people. It's a gradual, gradual thing over months and years of of using these approaches to go through this transformation. And then one day I was just walking in the park and I was like, oh shit, I know what all these teachers mean about feeling connected to everything now. It's like, oh yeah, that's quite, that's quite nice. And then I you just never think about it. But when I'm talking about it, I realize the world that used to seem so 
distant and hostile now has a, a kind of sense of goodness to it. And, and there's, a, there's a feeling of being at home. No matter where I am, there's a feeling of being at home. I can fly across the world to India, be in some crazy place, in my hotel room, like, what, what is going on here? Traffic going crazy outside, whatever. And yet there is a sense of being at home. Because you've heard spiritual teachers probably, or people say you need to be in the now, in the here and now. And you might have heard spiritual teachers say that here and now is what you actually are. <laughs> Let me try and explain that. Wherever you go, it is always now. You cannot not be now. You cannot not be in the now. There's no such thing as the future. There's no such thing as the past. The only reality to the future is the thoughts about it. When the future comes, it's now. When the past was, it's, it was now. It's always now, you're always now, you're always going to be now. You have always been now. And you're always here. Wherever you go, you are here. If you walk down to the local shop, when you get 20 meters out of your house, if you check in with your experience, you're here. When you're in the shop, you're here. Try and get away from here. Try and get away from being here. It's impossible. And here is another name for your being. And now is another name for your being. The one thing that can never leave you. The one thing that is completely reliable, it can never leave you. You can never escape the now. You can never not be here. If this has resonated with you, this isn't something you can think about, but if this has resonated with you, it might have given you a sense of what I'm talking about. Then that place, this, this touching in with your being is where you find true safety. Because it's the only thing that is completely reliable. It's the only thing you can never lose. You can never lose. <laughs> so it gives this sense of safety. Now, I don't wanna be one of these people who speaks in a way that is like, feel, see, it sounds like riddles or something. And I hope I haven't done that, but that just came out of me. But um, if, it, if, it, if it landed, it landed. And if it didn't, it doesn't matter. You can forget about it. it you'll, the understanding will come with time. But for now, I want to invite you to just come fully into this moment with me now. It's the, the experience of the room is just here within awareness, effortlessly within awareness. Here, the experience of the room is just here. You don't have to do anything to make that happen. 
you are aware right now. You don't have to make any effort at all to be aware. Even if I came into your house and slapped you around the face, <laughs> you'd still be aware. You, you, don't, it, it, you don't have to make any effort to be aware. That is your nature. You're just here aware. And it's coming to, to notice this very simple awareness that's always here, which is your doorway to liberation. And this is a process, and it's a process that I'm very much still in. And it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing to have discovered teachings like this and to be on this path. I wouldn't want anything else than to be on this path of self-discovery. I wouldn't want anything else than to be on this path of, of finding deeper and deeper freedom, deeper and deeper peace, deeper and deeper love. Because when you really touch in with the peace of your own being, you start to experience this unconditional love. And that's another big word. But it just means love is what you really are. Love, your being is love. And so when you touch in with your being, when you come to know your being deeper and deeper, then you come to know this love deeper and deeper. So I hope that's made sense. And more importantly, I hope you kind of, you're getting a feel for just being in this presence. It's very simple. We can use a lot of words. We can speak about it in all sorts of different ways, but it's very simple, really. If you've been listening to this and, you, and you've maybe relaxed a little bit, you've been present, you've been alert, maybe you just feel a sense of, okay, something feels a little bit more good inside, then you've completely, completely understood the message and you're going in the right direction. And if you keep exploring, then you'll just go deeper and deeper into this. So I think I'm gonna, gonna leave it there. It's really amazing to talk to you. Cause I find joy within the ordinary. It's extraordinary. Oh, the ordinary. It's extraordinary.